Hello, boys and girls. This week, we will be merging reading class and social studies class. That means we will be putting them together in one lesson. So let's take a look at what our reading and social studies objectives are. First, I hope that you are able to refer to details and examples in the text when explaining what the text says explicitly and when drawing inferences from the text. Remember, when we draw inferences, we use what we see in the text and the schema in the back of our brain, put it together and come up with a piece of information that the author did not exactly tell you. Our next objective is to determine the meaning of domain-specific words or phrases in a text. We'll be coming across a lot of vocabulary words related to our social studies topic of the week, which is the presidential election. Our final objective is to understand and appreciate the values and principles of American democracy. Well, let's jump right on in. This year is an election year. Election day is November 3rd, so American citizens are voting. Due to COVID-19, many citizens are sending in their ballots by mail. A ballot is a form used to cast a vote. This happens every four years, but the process starts long before November 3rd. So in one day, we, the people of the United States of America, will elect a president. The president is the leader of our country. And once again, American citizens vote on our president. So everyone has a say. First, we need to know, why do we vote? You may not be old enough to vote in the presidential election this year, but someday you will be. When the time comes, it is important to know why voting matters. Voting is one of the most important rights we have in the United States. Rights are freedoms that American citizens have. Rights allow us to make our own choices. For example, American citizens have the right to an education, to express our ideas, and to vote for leaders. Boys and girls, let's make a text-to-self connection. Pause here to think about what is a right that you have as a student and as an American citizen. Pause and reflect. That's right. As a student, it is your right to have an equal and fair education, to allow yourself to learn and grow academically. You also have the right to social-emotional support so that you can grow socially and emotionally. You also have the right to share your thoughts about lessons and participate in class discussions to further your learning and your peers' learning. As an American citizen, the text describes that we have the right to an education and to express our ideas and to vote for our leaders. Let's keep reading the text. When we vote, we are using our voices to tell our leaders our opinions on how we want the government to work. Did you know that in some countries, people do not have the right to vote for their leaders? Hmm. Pause right here to infer how citizens and countries who cannot vote on their leader feel. The author did not exactly tell us how these people in other countries feel when they can't vote, but we can take what we read in the text and what we know in the back of our brains to come up with an inference. Once again, pause right here to infer how citizens and countries who cannot vote on their leader feel.
That's right. If I were to make this inference, I would also say that these citizens in other countries feel like they don't have a say. Maybe they feel helpless because their voice isn't heard on how they believe their country should be ran. Let's keep reading the last paragraph of this text. It is important to vote when you have the opportunity. It is your chance to help choose the leader of our country. If you do not vote when you have the chance, you are letting others decide how you are going to be governed. Hmm. So let's think beyond the text. What does voting mean to the American citizen? Pause right here to reflect on this question. That's right. Voting to American citizens means that our voices are heard, and especially heard with regards to how we feel we should be governed or led. Voting also means to American citizens that they can freely share their opinions on how the country should be ran. Great job. Let's dive in a little bit more. Who can vote? We already know that we're not old enough to vote, as the first paragraph stated, but let's see who can vote. Each state has its own set of laws about who can vote. In every state, you must be at least 18 years old. You must be a citizen of the United States. And you must live in the state where you will be voting. In order to vote, you must first register or sign up to vote. There's a simple form to complete. Forms are sometimes available online and also at some government buildings. After you submit the form, you will receive a voter registration card in the mail. Let's recall what this text shared with us. Thinking within the text, list the requirements of being a voter. Pause right here to refer back to the text to see what the requirements of voting are. Great job. One of the first requirements, as the text stated, is that you must be at least 18 years old. The text also stated that you must be a citizen of the United States. A citizen just means that you are a person who legally belongs to or lives in a certain country. And a requirement to vote is that we legally belong to or live in the country, United States of America. Another requirement is that you must live in the state where you are voting. For example, a person who lives in New Jersey must vote in New Jersey. They cannot travel to Pennsylvania and vote in Pennsylvania. Another requirement and the last requirement is that you must register or sign up to vote. It is your turn, boys and girls. There are three challenges that you can complete today. Challenge one. Political parties. In this challenge, you will read this passage and complete the questions on the next slide. I first want to point out some vocabulary words. Candidates. Candidates are people running for office or running for the office of President of the United States. A party's platform is a plan to solve problems. So once again, for challenge one, you will read this passage, and then you will complete the questions on the next slide. Please remember to use race, restate the question, answer the question, cite text evidence or what you've read in the article, and explain if needed. This is the first challenge that you can choose from. The second challenge that you can choose from is to read the electoral process article. Once you have read the electoral process article, I want you to come up with two questions. 
may be a question that you could ask the teacher or quiz the classmate with. You will type your question here, but make sure to also answer your question. You will do this twice. Who knows, maybe I'll use one of your questions with my in-person students or for students for next year. The last challenge you can choose from is challenge three. You will review an election year timeline and then you will order events. You can do so by clicking and dragging each of these boxes with events into the correct spot. Make sure you go back and refer to the text to help you if you're stuck. Boys and girls, I hope you have fun choosing one of your challenge activities.